Hi, uh, good evening everyone. Today evening we have Dr. Asit Arora with us for discussing surgical approach in colorectal carcinoma. Dr. Asit Arora is one of the prominent GI surgeons in Delhi and Se region and right now he has been working as uh, uh, late in uh, surgical oncology GI and hepatobiliary unit at Max Cancer Institute Delhi and he is also heading the department over there. Dr. Arora has been an alumnus of prestigious GP Pant Hospital Delhi from where he did his super specialty MCH training on GI surgery. And uh, I know Dr. Arora for a couple of years now and I know personally that he has been very uh, keenly interested in doing uh, GI surgeries particularly related to uh, surgical oncology perspective and he has his keen interest on doing hepatobiliary and colorectal surgeries, uh, surgeries for liver metastasis. We are very thankful to have Dr. Arora today in this discussion. Uh, thank you Dr. Uh, Asit for being with us. I would request you to take over the session right now and please start your presentation. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you Dodul for such a wonderful introduction and thank you for me being a part of this uh, program. I mean, it's a great, great initiative that you have taken and only you could have done it. It needs a lot of hard work, dedication and devotion to the cause. And I know you are the right man for it. Okay, so I hope uh, you guys can uh, see the screen share. If somebody can confirm me and if somebody can confirm if I'm audible, all right to you guys. Yeah, you are. Uh, your screen is visible. Little bit uh, problem with the audio, but it's okay. Okay, so I'll try and speak a little louder, and I'll try and uh, make my surroundings a little quieter so that it happens. So uh, basically, what we are going to discuss is the surgical approach in colorectal carcinoma. I am going to outline the main principles on which we do the surgeries. I'm not going to go in details of surgery because. Uh, uh, I've been told and I believe most of the audiences are from the our sister concerns that is radiation and medical oncology. So I have kept my presentation in a form that we discuss about the principles and ethos of the oncosurgery in colorectal carcinomas. Okay, so uh, this is how I wish to present it. Any of you have any questions? please feel free to ask me. You can even interrupt me during the presentation or uh, type in any message in the chat box so that we can uh, discuss it later. Or if you wish to ask me something during the course, I'd be happy to stop and uh, take the questions and we can discuss. We have a lot of time at hand, so I'm in no rush. So uh, this is how we're gonna discuss it. We'll discuss a little about the anatomy. We'll discuss a little about the principles of surgery that entails the uh, lymphovascular clearances and margins, which are the soul of the uh, uh, oncological uh, surgeries. And second, last will be the role of managing the metastatic disease. That will be only in a brief. Okay. So uh, just uh, overview, colorectal cancers is the commonest of all GI cancers. We know that it, it is among one of the top five cancers in the males and females. And though we say it is a colorectal cancer, but the difference in the management is so stark that they are actually two different diseases altogether. They are two different animals to be managed differently, to be tamed differently. So colon cancer is quite different from rectal cancers. Surgery, like all uh, solid organ malignancies, is the sole, is the seat, the corner seat of the uh, the treatment, but obviously it is not only treatment modality. All the three modalities combined will give us a good outcome. But yes, if we have to offer a treatment with curative intent, surgery has to be a part of that. Right? So if you see, this is the five-year survival curve. Uh, this is the recent five-year survival curve. If you see localized disease, almost 90% five-year survival. Uh, regionally limited 70% and even with metastatic disease we have almost close to 14% of five year survival and I would say colorectal cancer is one of the success stories of solid organ malignancies in which we have 
achieved good amount of five year survival and it has come only by the close association of medical surgical and radiation oncology teams and uh, by the concentrated efforts of all three of the faculties of oncology so let's start with the anatomy of colon so basically if you see the colon it has i'm basically talking about the uh, the vascular anatomy because that is how your oncological principles are based on all the uh, uh, the lymphovascular clearance which we do for the clearance of uh, a good surgical clearance is based on the arterial supply and venous drainage and the lymphatic drainage usually apes the arterial supply so we if you talk about colonic blood supply we have the superior mesenteric artery and its branches which supplies the right side of the colon till the middle part of the uh, transverse colon so you have an ileocolic artery you have a right colic artery and you have a middle colic artery all three are the branches of superior mesenteric artery similarly we have the uh, inferior mesenteric artery and then you have the branches of inferior mesenteric artery that is the left colic artery and after the left colic artery it continues as the superior rectal artery and supplies rest of the colon and the rectum similarly you have the venous drainage the venous drainage of right side of the colon goes into superior mesenteric vein and the venous drainage of the left side of the colon goes into the inferior mesenteric vein and uh, you have a arcade which joins the two here so this about the colon and this about the rectum so rectum is basically a, a, a totally a different organ because it lies in the confines of the pelvis it is very uh, intimately related to the uh, uh, genital urinary organs you have bladder and the prostate in the males and vagina in the females posteriorly you have sacrum and you have endopelvic fascia here and you have little pelvic walls and there are important autonomic nerves which are in close relationship with the pelvis in in the rectum and again rectum is divided into three parts you have an upper rectum you have a middle rectum and you have the uh, lower rectum for the convenience sake we divide it into 555 cm and for all practical purposes the upper rectum which is which lies within the peritoneal cavity the tumors of upper, upper rectum are basically dealt just like the tumors of colon so there is a difference between the management of upper rectum and lower rectal tumor from surgical point of view so uh, again the blood supply of the rectum then rectum gets its blood supply from the from the inferior mesenteric artery which continues as the superior rectal artery you get blood supply from the middle rectal artery and then you have the inferior rectal artery which are the branches of the internal iliac artery so basically this is the blood supply and this is how the venous drainage also uh follows and this is how the uh the uh lymphatic drainage also follows so uh, like i said uh, why rectum is so different from the colon is because it lies into the pelvis and it is bounded by very important organs and a uh, very uh, tight uh, space and it does not give us too much of an area to play with which is very unlike colon which is lying free inside the peritoneal cavity there hardly uh, any any uh, problems of attaining margins or attaining the uh, circumferential margin versus and the longitudinal margin in colon whereas these issues are very stark in in the pelvis especially in the male pelvis where we have very limited space so you have basically anterior the relations of the bladder uh, of the Uh, rectum which is middle and lower one third rectum where you have some anal vesicles and you have prostate and you have uh, bladder anteriorly in the males or vagina in the females and you have autonomic nerves i told like i said before so these makes uh, these the uh, this makes the management of rectal cancers very different from the colon cancers so what are the main principles of oncology surgery these principles are for oncology surgeries in general it's not just related to colorectal surgeries for any surgery be it an hpv surgery be it pancreatic surgery be it head and neck surgeries everywhere so we have to achieve one complete lymphovascular clearances so we know that lymphatic tra travels along the major vessels 
So you have to take the control of the feeding vessels at the root. That is the main ethos of the uh, clearances. Second is the margins. So you have to look at the uh, longitudinal margin, that is the proximal margin and the distal margin, and you have to look at the circumferential margin. So if you can envision this, achieving these margins is hardly a problem in colonic surgery, but they are a major issue in the rectal surgery. That's why these are the basic differences which makes the surgical management of colon and rectum so very different. For all practical purposes, colon and the upper rectal tumors, especially the rectosigmoid junction tumors, they are clubbed together. And when we say rectal cancers, we are basically referring to middle and lower rectal cancers, which are actually the problematic cancers to deal with. So colon is predominantly intraperitoneal, rectum is extraperitoneal. Achieving negative margins is usually not a challenge. It's very easily done in colonic cancers. Because of these close association of pelvic organs, margin status is usually very difficult to achieve. Thus, there is very high local failure rates in rectal cancers, whereas the local failure rates in colonic cancers are exceptionally rare. And that is why new adjuvant therapy is usually not required in most of the cases of colonic cancers. But you usually use new adjuvant therapy in almost all the cases of rectal tumors, especially middle and lower one third of rectal tumors. So this is basically how uh, rules of surgeries are set, right? So I'll just give you an example of how we go about uh, surgery of colonic cancers, right? So for example, if you have a tumor in the right side of the colon, right? If you have a tumor in the right side of the colon, that is in the ascending colon or the hepatic lecture, so how are you going to deal with this tumor? So what are the principles of the surgeries? You have to achieve a good lymphovascular clearance and you have to achieve good margins. So if you look at here, margin status is never a problem. I can achieve five, seven, 10 centimeter margin, whatever I need. I can divide this rectum here, colon here, and I can divide small intestine here. I can achieve as much as margin I want. It will never be a challenge. Similarly, if you look at the lymphatic and vascular clearance, so I divide right colic artery right at the root of the origin from SMA here. I divide ileocolic, I divide right colic, and I divide the superior mesenteric. So if tumor is here, it is principally draining along these vessels into the right colic, into the ileocolic, and into the middle colic right branch. So how I'm going to operate is this. I'm going to take this margin here. This gives me a good margin of the tumor. I divide the vessels along the right branch of the middle colic, uh, along the right colic, and then along the ileal colic. And then I divide here about the small bowel. So this procedure is called as right hemicolectomy. So divide the some part of the colon, hemicolon, and small part of the small intestine, and taking a good lymphovascular clearance along the major vessels. Similarly, if you have a tumor here on the left side, so you take the vessels along the main draining vessels here. So this is the vessel which is called as left colic artery. So you divide the left colic artery just as it arises from the superior inferior mesenteric vessels. You divide the middle colic artery, uh, the, uh, the left branch of the middle colic artery, and you take good margin of colon at both sides. Never a challenge. So this is a left colic, a left hemicolectomy. Similarly, if you have a tumor somewhere in the sigmoid colon or in the rectosigmoid junction, again, the draining vessel would become inferior mesenteric artery and margins would be 10 centimeter here and about five centimeter here, which I, I take like this. So this procedure will become an anterior resection. Now, these procedures can be done either open or I can perform these procedures laparoscopically depending upon the expertise you have. What we do inside remains exactly the same. Either you are doing it open or laparoscopically. 
these principles remains the same and this is what you have to achieve in our setup in my practice all of these procedures are done laparoscopically for many years we have mastered mastered the technique and we have been doing it laparoscopically safely so whether you do these procedures laparoscopically or you do robotically or you do open does not matter as long as you are meeting with the principles of the oncological principles that i told you complete lymphovascular clearance of all the draining vessels and achieving good circumferential and longitudinal margins as long as you can do it laparoscopic surgeries or robotic surgeries give as good as results as open surgery and they provide additional advantage of having a good and good pre op uh, good perioperative recovery less pain and added cost savings so in our practice this has become a standard of care for long and even all the world literature says that laparoscopic surgeries for carcinoma colon is standard of care and it is as good as open surgery now when we talk about rectal tumors especially for mid and lower one third rectal tumors the challenge are multifold like i told you you have confined space in pelvis it is bounded by the uh, bony pelvis it is bounded by the anterior uh, genito urinary organs especially in male pelvis where the space is so narrow that you have a very close approximation of tumors to anteriorly prostate and seminal vesicles and there are important autonomic nerves which courses through the pelvis posteriorly as well as anteriorly along the prostate and these nerves have very important functional uh, function to play they are very important for your uh, erectile and ejaculatory function they are very important for maintaining the uh, urinary continence so if you damage them patient will have a very poor quality of life so that is very important and third important consideration that we have to give when we are dealing with rectal tumors is the sphincter complex so if you have to uh, you know preserve the continence you have to preserve the sphincter complex which is made up of uh, three important parts you have the uh, the levator and i and puborectalis muscle which continues downwards as the external sphincter and you have the internal sphincter which is the continuation of the circular smooth muscles of the rectum which continues down as a uh, sorry colon which continues down as a uh, circular smooth muscle so this sphincter complex is very important and how your tumor is in approximation or uh, association with sphincter complex will depend decide the kind of surgery you can perform okay so you have to have these three consideration for what you have to uh, deliver to the patient now you have to uphold the oncological principles while preserving the functional outcome so you cannot sacrifice the oncological principles for functional outcome so you cannot say that i want to preserve the sphincter complex but i can you know forego the oncological principles so first you have to uphold the oncological principles you have to have good margins you have to have complete lymphovascular clearance then you have to uh, maintain the functional outcome of the patient so you have to have a uh, good nerve preserving surgeries and you have to have a good sphincter preserving surgery right so these are three important things so these are some important uh, considerations that you have to do when you are deciding uh, about the surgery for rectum so new adjuvant ctrt is almost a rule especially in indian context because we hardly ever see early rectal cancers that is uh, less than t2 and no negative cancers i think in my practice we hardly ever perform a uh, middle or low rectal cancers without new adjuvant ctrt almost all the patients 
by the virtue of the location and by the virtue of the fact that we don't have robust screening programs in our country we detect these patients when they are beyond t2 and they are usually having no positive disease so these patients usually end up getting a new adjuvant chemo radiation protocols i think uh, dodul will be taking a class for radiation in rectal cancer so he would be in a better position to discuss in detail if you wish to discuss something about new adjuvant ctrt and its protocols we can do it uh, whenever i'm done with this so second concept is total mesorectal excision what we call as tme so tme basically means that so rectum is uh, covered by a, a, a fascia and there is a soft tissue ensuring that fascia which is called as uh, mesorectum so the the soft tissue surrounding the rectum and then there is a fascia which is uh, covering that soft tissue and this fascia is then there will there is a uh, endopelvic fascia which is uh, this and then we have ectopelvic fascia so there is fascia outside so interiorly will be have uh, denonsoleal fascia and posteriorly you will be having a uh, uh, presacral fascia so there are beautiful anatomical planes between these fascias and we have to maintain this so this is called as the holy planes if you stain this plane all your nodes and the uh, the lymphovascular tissues are inside the tme and all the pelvic nerves are outside the the, the planes of tme so if you stuck in that plane you will neither be damaging any important uh, uh, nerves the pelvic nerves the autonomic nerves at the same time you will be doing a complete oncological principles so tme is a must in a low and mid rectal tumors okay then you have to know about the concepts of anterior resections you at least should to know what are these terms mean what is an anterior resection what is an low anterior resection what is an ultra low anterior resection and what is an intersphincteric resection and then when your tumor is involving the anal canal or is it involving the sphincter complex when you cannot preserve the sphincter complex then we have to do something called as abdomino perineal resection in which you sacrifice the entire rectum and the anal canal along with the the internal and external sphincters so these are the surgeries that we do for your uh uh these so these are basic concepts along which the surgery for rectum revolves around so all the patients who are t2 and above and who have node positive disease need to get new adjuvant ctrt i think there is a good amount of consensus around this and there is no uh, i think uh, debate uh, on this we can have a debate on when to use a long course versus a short course rt especially in the uh, in the context of covid when there is more and more data saying that you use 5 uh, into 5 uh, the short course rt uh, even your stockholm trial says that it is as good as anything else and at times when even after using the uh, short uh, new adjuvant ctrt when your circumferential resection margins are threatened so when you say your crm is threatened so you have mesorectum for staging of distal rectal tumors we always prefer mri of the pelvis contrast enhanced mri of the pelvis which will delineate uh, the rectum the mesorectum and the sphincter complex beautifully when the margin between the mesorectum and the tumor is less than 1 mm we call it as a threatened crm a threatened crm means when you go in the space is so less that you can end up getting a positive margin and in all circumstances you have to avoid that so if when you do a post treatment post ctrt mri and a pet scan and you find that the tumor has not responded well or it has there is you still have a threatened crm then there is a case of adding systemic chemotherapy to these patient so that you can you know shrink the tumor further so that your 
uh, margin status can be preserved. Okay, so this is one concept of near edge and CTRT, which I wanted to highlight. Second is the concept of TME. So, like I said, this is uh, mesorectal fascia here, and this goes till the distal rectum. And as we go down towards the levator ani, the mesorectum th thins out. Mesorectum is thick on the posterior aspect and the lateral aspect. It is very thin anteriorly. So when we take the tumor along with the entire mesorectal fascia, this is called as total mesorectal excision or TME. This is the single most important surgical principle which ensures complete lymphovascular clearance of the rectal tumors because all the lymphovascular drainage occurs from distal to cephalad, right? And it runs through the mesorectal fascia. So once you are upholding this technique of mesorectal excision, you are ensuring that patient is having a complete lymphovascular clearance. Second, about the concept of what is an anterior resection? What is a low anterior resection? What is an ultra low anterior resection? And what is an intersphincteric resection? So basically, sphincter preservation is one of the important goals of rectal cancer surgery. And new adjuvant chemotherapy, by the virtue of downstaging its tumors, give us an added advantage and added opportunity of preserving sphincters for many more patients. Secondly, the advent of laparoscopic surgery and robotic surgery by the uh, virtue of giving us a better view of the pelvis and the magnified view of the pelvis allows us to preserve more and more sphincter complexes by allowing us to go deep into the pelvis and operating with a magnified view and achieving good margins. Secondly, the advent of surgical staplers. So what we do now is something called as a double stapled technique of doing a colorectal anastomosis, which allows us to go deep into the pelvis and dividing the rectum at, the, at as low as the levator and eye muscles. And at times we can go and do an intersphincter to resections. So these newer techniques allow us to preserve the sphincter complex and the continence of the patient at the same time upholding the oncological principles and achieving negative margins. So, okay, sorry. Okay, I think there was one more. Oh, I think there was one more picture I wanted to put in and I think I have missed it. So let's go back to the rectal. Okay, yeah. So if you have, if you look at this picture, so this is the upper rectum. This is the peritoneal reflection here. So up to the peritoneal reflection is the upper rectum, upper one third. Below that, five centimeter is the middle one third. And then less, the inferior most five centimeter will be the lower one third of the rectum. So if you divide and make an anastomosis, if you divide the rectum in the upper one third, and you create an anastomosis above the peritoneal reflection. So if you make an anastomosis between the proximal colon and rectum, anywhere here, above the peritoneal reflection, this procedure is called as anterior resection. What I showed you here, sorry. My God, I missed. Yeah, so this, if you make an anastomosis till this point, this is called a anterior resection. If I divide the middle rectal stump and I go below the peritoneal reflection here and make an anastomosis, this procedure is called as low anterior resection. If I go till the levator and I, so if you see here, you can cannot see levator and I very well here, but this is where levator and I would be. There will be a tuber rectalis link, and you have levator and I at the junction of anorectum. So, if you divide your rectum here and you make an anastomosis here at 
the puborectalis sling or the junction of surgical and surgical anorectum this is called as ultra low anterior resection okay so these are the three terms that you have to know and if you go further down and take the internal sphincter along with the rectum and do an anastomosis of colon to the anal canal this is called as internal intersphincteric resection in this your continence is preserved only by the function of your external sphincter all right so these are the three terms that i uh, want you to remember and i wish you to uh, know okay now these techniques can be performed laparoscopically they can be performed robotically and they can be performed as an open surgery so robotic surgery definitely had an advantage when we perform surgeries in deep pelvis if you have to do an ultra low anterior resection or if you have to do an intersphincteric resection in these two procedures the robotic surgeries definitely give us an added advantage right so this is all about the basic crux and the basic principles of surgeries in colorectal cancer so this was about the surgery of localized and the locally advanced colorectal cancers so what about metastatic colon and rectal cancer i think this itself is a topic in itself and we can go on discussing it for another half an hour to 45 minutes uh, basically metastatic colon cancer all i can all i wish to say here is that all is not lost there are certain category of tumors especially if you have limited liver and limited pulmonary match you can still manage these patients with curative intent you can still perform surgeries in which you can do a complete resection of the primary and you can do a resection of the secondary as well in especially in the cases of uh, liver match because i am uh, you know my expertise are limited to the management of gi and hpv cancers so i don't deal much with the pulmonary metastatic diseases but i do deal with lot of colorectal liver metastasis so the concept of managing the colorectal liver metastasis is that we have to start treatment with a systemic therapy so that you can uh, you can uh, treat the micro metastasis first you do the response assessment and if you feel that the disease in the liver is such that you can achieve an r0 resection that is you can remove all the tumor in the liver and maintain sufficient liver remnant which we call as future liver remnant you can have an adequate flr which can give a survival to the patient then this surgery is on so this is the simple me, concept of hello madam uh, sir please could you discuss apr also yes i can so okay. basically uh, you want me to do it now or you want me to uh, do it uh, later uh, okay okay so, okay so what is apr if you can see this if this picture is clear to you if this tumor say this tumor was not here it was another 2 cm below if this tumor was here right and if i cannot get any margin with relation to my sphincter here so if you can see this this is levator and i muscle and it is continuing as a external sphincter here this is your internal sphincter okay if my tumor is in relationship with the sphincters if it has involved the sphincters or if it has gone down into the anal canal here then there is no way that i can achieve a negative margin without sacrificing the sphincter complex so if i have to extend my resection rather than taking here my resection line will go like this and it will take the levator and i 
along with the sphincter and it will go here like this. And on the left side, it will go from here to like this and here. Okay. So I will take the rectum along with the part of levator and I along with the part of internal and external sphincter and we'll take the entire cone with the perianal skin here and then we will close this anal canal for permanent. This procedure is called as abdominal perineal resection. Why abdominal perineal resection? Because this procedure is done through the abdominal route and the part of this procedure is done of excising the anal canal along with the sphincter is done through the perineal approach. So this is called as abdominal perineal resection. So this is basically determined by the fact the location of the tumor, if it is gone into the anal canal or if it is gone into the sphincter complex, then I would have to perform an APR. Then I cannot preserve my sphincter complex. I hope I'm clear there, right? Intersphincteric. Uh... Yeah. So intersphincteric resection is. So this is your levator and I, and this is your external sphincter, and this is your internal sphincter. So internal sphincter is a continuation of the circular smooth muscles of the rectum here. So they continue as the internal sphincter. So there is a natural plane between an external sphincter and the internal sphincter. And if you remove the internal sphincter and preserve the external sphincter, the, incon the continence of the patient can still be preserved. Okay. So a tumor which is below here, but it is not involving the levator and I, or it is not involving the sphincter, external sphincter complex. And it is going partly into the anal canal here so that I cannot divide my rectum at this point. If it is going below, then I can extend my resection in this inter plane in which I will extend my resection along the inter plane taking away the external internal sphincters, but preserving the external sphincter, thereby preserving the sphincter complex, thereby preserving the continence of the patient. So this procedure is called as intersphincteric anterior resection or intersphincteric resection. So this is how you can preserve the continence, whereas resect the approach is used for intersphincteric resection. So we do the upper approach, the, it, the, it can be done laparoscopically, robotically or open. The upper part is done through this and the intersphincteric dissection is done through the perineal approach. So this is the intersphincteric plane. You can palpate it. If you have ever done a per rectal examination, you can make out the difference between the external sphincter and the internal sphincter. External sphincter goes till the is much more distal as compared to the internal sphincter. Internal sphincter stops around one centimeter prior or proximal to the distal sphincter. And you can just inject this area with adrenal adrenaline saline and you can go on to this plane through the perineal approach. So you have to have upper and part of upper done. dissection is done through the abdominal part and this approach is done through the perineal part. Thank you, sir. Right. So these were the, and uh, what we were discussing about the systemic is, obviously, all is not lost. The systemic therapy, the response assessment, and if you can still achieve an R0, in which for liver, I say, R0 is basically, liver is such an organ which can allow us to take part, take away almost 50 to 60% of liver can be safely removed. And if you can, re if you can have a 40% of good functional liver volume, the liver will regenerate itself. So if you can achieve an arterial resection and leave a future liver remnant, which is more than 40%, you can safely do a extensive liver resection. And if, the tumors fall in the purview of that, we can do a resection even for multiple liver metastasis as well. Similarly, if you have a limited peritoneal disease, 
all is not lost for even these patients. We do something called as cytoreductive surgeries and HIPEC. So these patients who have limited disease, you have a PCI, which is a peritoneal carcinomatosis index. If the PCI is less than 16, patient do not have gross ascites and the tumor is not involving the small bowel mesentery, you can do something called as cytoreductive surgery. These patients can go on to get a hypothermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy and these patients can still be cured or have a meaningful survival. So all is not lost for metastatic colorectal cancers. We, I think we need a dedicated class for discussing about these things in detail. But to cut a long story short, metastatic cancers of colon and rectum should not be just, uh, you know, brushed aside as non-salvageable or non-curative options. We have to make sure that an oncosurgeon and a medical oncologist and a radiation oncologist deal with all these patients through a multidisciplinary team. These patients, all the decisions are done in a, in a tumor board setting, wherever all the stakeholders discuss everything in detail and then come to a conclusion whether to treat these patients with the curative intent or with a non-curative intent. Those are... For the liver resection, met metastasis resection and pulmonary metastasis resection, is there any size criteria, sir? No, there is no size criteria. There is no number criteria. So the only criteria is whether you can remove all the tumors and you can also let the, uh, the uh, functional liver remnant, which is sufficient for patient to be alive. So FLR, but we say a functional liver remnant, that is a, a liver remnant which has good inflow and a good outflow at, uh, so I can say uh, roughly about 40% of the liver remnant with good inflow and outflow. If you can have that, any number of liver metastasis, whatever the size of it, can be taken out.